Up next on Coastal Today, new research reveals CCU's significant economic impact on South Carolina. Public safety teams up with state law enforcement for an active shooter drill. And students join hands to affect homelessness. Now your host, Robin Russell. Hello and thanks for joining us. It only takes a minute for someone to do serious harm on a college campus. CCU Public Safety performed an active shooter drill recently with the help of the State Law Enforcement Division. Sergeant David Clowder joins us with student athlete Warren Gillis, who also served as a volunteer for this exercise. Welcome both of you. Um, now, Sergeant, I know being prepared for the possibility of an active shooter is so important. I want to know what this drill was like for you. It was very educational, very informative, um, and the practical part of it was uh, it, it hit home when, when we were actually doing the training. The first day was uh, mostly classroom training uh -huh. um, and we learned about um, the history of active shooter and when the active shooter turned from having a SWAT team to respond to an incident and the first responders actually responding after Columbine, the SWAT team was they waited on the SWAT team and since that point we learned that it's more important to respond right away right and the first responders will, will, will go right in now did you put that in practice the second day yeah the second day is when we did the practical um, stuff we used uh, these um, we used our, our actual it would be the guns that we were using but they called simunition rounds it's almost like paintball right and um, they had actors um, the the SWAT team would have actors playing the bad guys and um, Warren actually was like the hostage <sighs> Warren, Warren and a couple other student yeah. workers yeah played the hostages and um, we went through our training as um, how we were supposed to respond to it um, and when we would enter the the room and go you know go after the right, bad guy. Right. Um, so Warren you volunteered for this exercise yes, sir, and yes. he said you played the hostage. Yes. Um, how did this impact you to be part yeah. of this drill? Um, I got great insight on how how these guys train for, for any type of situation and it was it was very realistic. Right. Yeah. What else did you learn from this? I learned a lot of things um, about combat with the enemies, um, what the first responders responsibilities are, um, how to um, make a health kit for wow. yourself, things yes, like that, yes. Yes, different types of methods and things. Now, did you learn anything about our own public safety right here on campus? Did you learn that you feel safe? I mean, how do you feel about these guys now? Oh, yes, I feel safe. I feel safe because <laughs> they, they protected me during, the, during the, um, the training exercises as I was a hostage, and they kept me safe then. Right. So I, I believe they can do it. Um, Sergeant, what were some of the takeaways for you from this um, drill? What did you learn? It was really a good refresher for me. Um, I, like I said, I've been to a couple active shooter trainings, and um, it's always good for us to, to go through the training at least once a year. Um, it, it, when I, we did the scenarios, there was three different scenarios that we did, and two of them, we were, I was the only police officer responding to it. <laughs> So, um, and the, the person that was training us, um, he really knew how to, to hit home when, yes, when, yes. when we would do it. Um, the second scenario, he actually told me it was a school shooting, and um, he, well, before he asked me if yeah. uh, I have any children, and I have a six-year-old son, and he told me, okay, your son's in that uh, school, and you know exactly where he is, so you need to go in there, and you need to take care of business. So, when I responded, um, that was running through my mind, and... Um, I did the job pretty good on that one. Thank you for all you do on this campus, and thank you too, Warren. You're welcome. Up next on Coastal Today, the sounds of the Caribbean fill the air at the upcoming World Music Ensemble. And later, the numbers are in, verifying that CCU has a big impact on the South Carolina economy. Coastal Carolina University basketball is coming soon and the Chanticleers are poised for success with a schedule that features 17 home games at the HTC Center, including SEC champion Ole Miss November 16th. Support head coach Cliff Ellis and the Shots as they pursue a Big South title. Season tickets start at just $100, less than $6 per game. Call 347-8499 or visit GoCCUSports.com to order your tickets today. Coastal Carolina basketball, the Grand Strands college team. Let's go, Coastal!
Memphis is a movie set, and my acting career began at Coastal Carolina University. Begin your path to prominence today by applying online. Welcome back to Coastal Today. Music lovers, get ready for an evening of music from the Caribbean. The World Music Ensemble will soon be performed at CCU's Wheelwright Auditorium. Joshua Franz is co-director for this spectacular show of talent. Thank you for joining us today, Joshua. Absolutely. Uh, tell us what to expect from these groups performing. Uh, our concert this semester features two sections. Our mm -hmm. first half of the concert will be music from Cuba, and the second half of the concert will be music from Trinidad and Tobago. Very exciting. And you were one of the directors. Mm -hmm. Tell me about what the experience is like to direct these. It's, it's very different and very rewarding. Our ensemble features students from all over campus. They're not just music majors, so we have computer science majors and biologists and chemists and as well as music majors, so it makes it really fun. Um, do they audition to be in this? Mm -mm. No, anybody's allowed to be in it. Um, how many students? We've, uh, this semester we have 26, but we've had up to 32 in our ensemble. Oh wow, amazing. How many hours have, have gone into this rehearsal? We rehearse twice a week, uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays, for about an hour and a half. Um, and who picks the type of music? Uh, our, the director of percussion studies here at the university, Jesse right. Willis. Right. Um, Joshua, what is your specialty? My specialty is percussion. And when you say percussion, you mean all percussion. Mm -hmm. And how, how do you pick that? Is that something you picked as a child because you were banging on everything? I mean, how does that? <laughs> I went into music because I couldn't do anything else. <laughs> <laughs> I just knew that was going right. to be my path. And right. And you're sort of new at Coastal. How did you find us? I came to Coastal through Jesse Willis, the right. uh, professor. He was a uh, roommate and one of my best friends at school. Right. And when uh, the job came open, he gave me a phone call and said, come out and audition for oh, it. How and wonderful. Um, and what do you think about the level of our students and their talents? Phenomenal. Right. Really phenomenal. For the size of the school, the, the talent overall at the, in the music department is really good. Um, and who should come see this concert? Everyone. So families, everybody <laughs> will have a great time. They will not be able to sit still in the seats. Um, for those that don't understand anything about um, Cuban or, or Caribbean music, tell us about what the sound is like. Uh, the section from Trinidad and Tobago will feature all um, traditional music played on the steel pan, which oh, is their native instrument. Yes. So. Um, what a wonderful sound. Mm -hmm. um, and besides the steel pans, what else? Uh, we also play on uh, conga drums from Cuba, a lot of singing, some dancing, very oh. showman-like. <laughs> showman-like, great, mm -hmm. great, great, great. Okay, Joshua, we look forward to what a wonderful night this will be. Um, thank you for joining us. And are you doing any other concerts? We have a percussion ensemble concert coming up this semester and, uh, of course, the Spectrum concert. Yes, yes, great. Well, we look forward to seeing you again. Thank you. Absolutely. We want to remind everyone that the World Music Ensemble is coming up Friday, November the 12th at 7.30. And if you want to find out more or get tickets, contact the Wheelwright box office or go online at ticketreturn.com. Up next on Coastal Today, the financial outlook is pretty bright for CCU. You'll get the numbers. Coastal Carolina University basketball is coming soon and the Chanticleers are poised for success with a schedule that features 17 home games at the HTC Center, including SEC champion Ole Miss November 16th. Support head coach Cliff Ellis and the Shots as they pursue a Big South title. Season tickets start at just $100, less than $6 per game. Call 347-8499 or visit GoCCUSports.com to order your tickets today. Coastal Carolina basketball, the Grand Strands college team. Let's go, let's go. Coastal Carolina University delivers a $300 million impact to our local economy, is responsible for the existence of more than 4,000 jobs, and CCU students, faculty, and alumni positively impact our community's quality of life each day. So no matter your color, the power of teal is undeniable. Learn more about CCU's significant community impact at coastalconnects.com. Your community, your university.
office is a movie set, and my acting career began at Coastal Carolina University. Begin your path to prominence today by applying online. Welcome back. CCU's research economist and his team of analysts have been hard at work studying the impact of Coastal Carolina University on South Carolina's economy. The numbers are in, and our own Rob Salvino joins us with the latest. Welcome back, Rob. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Um, tell me about these numbers that have just come in. Okay. So we started looking at this uh, really the, the spring of this past year. We had students in our senior research seminar. Uh, start going through the data and, and looking at uh, what has been done. And then in the summer, we uh, had a student who graduated here actually in economics and came back. She's been finishing her master's degree in economics at Murray State, and she worked with our center all summer, um, did some great work for us, and we put this study, just kind of finished it, put it out. And, uh, you know, what it shows is the uh, significant growth of the university, which we can see, of right. course, as we go around campus, but it's not just in the buildings, it's, it's in the growth of the student body. Um, the, the programs that we're offering, it's, it's really changed. I've been here myself, this is my seventh year, and, and the university literally looks like a different place just even from when I came here seven years ago. So the study went into that to kind of quantify that. Uh -huh. yeah. And continue, I want to know what our impact is. Okay, so if, if we look at from a state, and this one different about this is we looked at on the state, not yeah. just uh, Horry County or the region, but the state of South Carolina. And that impact is just under $500 million, $498 million in total output. And that includes the, the indirect and induced uh, expenditures from, from service companies, from income generated in the, in the state economy, that it's respent through the state economy. We quantified that. Over 4,000 jobs, close to $200 million in income that is indirectly or directly tied to, to the university. Um, just in Horry County, it's, it's close to $440 million impact. So most of the impact is certainly in this specific region. Um, explain to our viewers again what, when you say $480 million impact, what right. that means. Right. Okay, so the university itself, you, you take its budget. For example, if $120 million is spent in the state, just from a budget perspective, uh -huh. this doesn't include things like capital expenditures when I'm talking about our budget, um, but just its, its revenue that it brings in from, from the on-budget items. And in order to deliver education in, in, this, uh, in the state of South Carolina, all the services that have to be uh, taken in, the, the programs that, that are dealt with, basically you have service providers that have nothing to do with education. For example, right. a company like Unifirst uh, that comes right. in and does our, our mats for, for safety and, and sanitary reasons, that type of thing. You have all different types of services. And then outside in the economy, uh, restaurants, um, theaters, it's just all different types of things, but we have a student body that's over 9,000 students now. And wow. then you have faculty, you have staff, and, and it just gets bigger and bigger every year. So it's a pretty big, uh, it's one of the largest employers now, if not the largest employer in this county. Talk a little bit about the funding from the state versus where right. the other dollars. Right, and from my interest, I think that's one of the most interesting things in the study. Yes. And uh, the, the state appropriations for Coastal Carolina University have, have gradually fallen over the over the years. I think they were, uh, in this study, the highest that we saw was in a, about 2003. About 21 percent of our funding came from the state. Uh, today it's less than 5 percent, and that has gone down over time as our own revenue generated from our own sources has increased. So our growth has literally been self-funded. So we, the university goes out and recruits from outside. Right. We, we have a pretty balanced mix. Uh, I think right now we're at about 45% of our student body comes from outside the state. So still 55% in-state, over 2,000 students from Horry County alone. So we still are very much serving the local population, but we're also leveraging that with what we're able to do throughout the, the whole entire East Coast. Um, I think that says a lot about our character here at CCU. I think so, yeah. Uh, Rob, you're always a wealth of knowledge. Thank you so much for joining us today. I look forward to more of your studies. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. When we come back, students come together to help those who have no home. Coastal Carolina University basketball is coming soon and the Chanticleers are poised for success with a schedule that features 17 home games at the HTC Center, including SEC champion Ole Miss November 16th. Support head coach Cliff Ellis and the Shots as they pursue a Big South title. Season tickets start at just $100, less than $6 per game. Call 347-8499 or visit GoCCUSports.com to order your tickets today. Coastal Carolina basketball, the Grand Strands college team. Let's go, let's go.
office is a movie set, and my acting career began at Coastal Carolina University. Begin your path to prominence today by applying online. Every day across the U.S., more than three and a half million people search for a place to rest their head at night. CCU's Civic Engagement Organization is working with student volunteers to help make a difference. National Hunger and Homelessness Activism Week kicks off November the 11th. J.P. Peters is CCU's volunteer coordinator for AmeriCorps VISTA, here with student volunteer Sharice Lassane to tell us about a week filled with ways to help those who suffer from hunger and homelessness. J.P., this is all in the spirit of um, thankfulness. Sometimes we don't realize um, how lucky we actually are. Um, tell us about how this week demonstrates um, how we give thanks. Um, this week, uh, we just give back in ways of um, whether it's collecting canned goods, coats, uh, and those different drives, or it's just showing or showing our students and aware, making them aware of the situation through um, various activities, um, such as uh, like a hunger banquet or uh, a shanty town or things of that nature. Um, talk about the hunger <coughs> banquet. Well, the hunger banquet, it's where um, our students go in and they're actually randomly go in and draw or spin a wheel and they are selected in different percentiles, whether it's upper class, middle class, or lower class. And upper class is gonna be the smaller group that gets the fine dining. And then the, the middle class gets the semi-nice dining. And then the lower class where they're sitting on the floor eating that rice and bread and water. So um, it gives them an idea of the percentages and the, how, how much it's split up in a smaller uh, a group setting. Um, so. I've had students in the past that have done that meal mm -hmm. and it affected them very much so. Mm -hmm. um, they didn't have any idea of how thankful they actually were until partaking in that meal. Um, Sharice, why did you pick this to get involved in? Um, I mostly pick this to get involved in because I do a lot of activism in the community. I volunteer and I mentor. Um, at one of the lower income elementary schools. So I see the effects that it has on children. And then when I come back to school and I see how blessed um, and how ungrateful the CCU community can be sometimes, I just kind of want to get in and show them that, hey, here's what's going on in the world. We have so much to be thankful for. So we need to stop complaining so much and go out and help others. Have you seen the light bulb ever go off in those students? Yes, ma'am, I actually have. And when it goes off, it's such a great thing to see in people because I know me, for example, um, a few years ago, I was just like oblivious to everything else that was going on in the world until I really came to college and saw things, um, I guess, through a different, I guess, a different outlook on life. And when I see it in other people, I'm like, thank you, Jesus. It's not only me who wants to help people. Well, what is it that made you want to be a part of AmeriCorps VISTA? Well, uh, at first it was just to get involved more with the higher ed aspects of things. But when uh, once I got involved with it and got to see what I was missing out on and giving back, it was just a great opportunity and I, I would never give it up. Um, I, I, this is actually my second year doing this type of thing and I, I absolutely love it. And the first year getting to see, like Sri said, that, that, that light bulb going off was just the most amazing feeling ever. And to have that feeling again is something I, I long for and really strive to have happen here at Coastal. So. so November the 11th, we kick off that week and we hope to turn on a lot of light bulbs and a lot of students. Yes, sir. Um, thank you both for joining us. Right, thank you. Hunger and Homelessness Activism Week is coming up November the 11th through the 16th with so many opportunities for you to raise your awareness about these issues and to help. So come to CCU for one of these great events. Up next on Coastal Today, it's Matt Hoag's Shot to Clear Roundup. Stay tuned. Coastal Carolina University basketball is coming soon, and the Shanaclears are poised for success with a schedule that features 17 home games at the HTC Center, including SEC champion Ole Miss November 16th. Support head coach Cliff Ellis and the Shots as they pursue a Big South title. Season tickets start at just $100, less than $6 per game. Call 347-8499 or visit GoCCUSports.com to order your tickets today. Coastal Carolina basketball, the Grand Strands college team. Let's go, let's go. Coastal Carolina University delivers a $300 million impact to our local economy, is responsible for the existence of more than 4,000 jobs, and CCU students, faculty, and alumni positively impact our community's quality of life each day. 
So no matter your color, the power of teal is undeniable. Learn more about CCU's significant community impact at CoastalConnects.com. Your community, your university. Set. And my acting career began at Coastal Carolina University. Begin your path to prominence today by applying online. As the voice of the Chanticleers, Matt Hogue is on the road, in the press box, and behind the scenes of CCU's sports action. Let's check in with Matt for this week's Chanticleer Roundup. Coastal Carolina Athletics has always had a great tradition in terms of success on the field, but what also has been successful through the years is the academic achievements of our student athletes. And today it's a pleasure to introduce you to one of those who has not only excelled on the playing court, but also inside the classroom. Megan Laffin, Coastal Carolina volleyball senior from Holbrook, New York. And Megan, uh, it's good to see you again. I know uh, it's been quite a whirlwind your past few years. Uh, <laughs> here at Coastal Carolina University, but you epitomize the term student athlete. How do you do it? Oh, well, what a <laughs> question. Um, honestly, I think it's an honor and I want to treat it that way as a privilege. Uh, I just try to take advantage of every opportunity I can get. And I think that Coastal is a great place to do that because there are, you know, only 10,000 or so students here. So for those of us who really are ambitious, there are so many opportunities for us. And I just, I, I just want to take advantage of everything I can. Now let's go back in time. Obviously, volleyball was a principal reason you, you ended up here and, and you've had a successful career. But what were some of the other variables you think uh, from, from your perspective that made Coastal your best choice? I think for me, uh, I grew up in a kind of a tight-knit community, and I was really itching to just see something new. Uh, I, I love the idea of coming down south where it's a little bit warmer, close to the beach. I definitely grew up on Long Island where I loved the beach, so I wanted to stay on the coast. Uh, and I just kind of felt this connection that was almost inexplainable when I got to Coastal, and I just felt that the team that was already established here was really also, a, you know, a tight-knit group and really, you know, loved one another and loved the school, and I just wanted to be a part of it so badly. So, Three times you've uh, been selected to the Big South Conference's presidential honor roll. That's for having at least a 3.0 or better in, in your grade point average. And that success has led you to the Wall Fellows Program. You're a business major inside the, the Wall College of Business. Tell us about that experience because not only are you one, but you've taken a leadership role. I have. You know, the Wall Fellows Program is an incredible program. I didn't even know it existed. I think that would have been one of the things that drew me to Coastal had I kn known about it before. But, uh, you know, I found out about it as a sophomore and it terrified me at first. Just the idea of, you know, we have to dress up business casual every day and there are so many, you know, opportunities and people to network with and it terrified me. But I kind of realized that fear is one of the greatest motivators in the world. And I just knew that such a great opportunity, I just had to take advantage of it. And once I got inducted, I kind of got over that fear and realized that the people who I was around were, you know, just like me and I could do this. And so one opportunity led to the next and, and now I'm a senior and we're inducting the class below me and I just, I can't believe how fast it's all gone and, and you know, how much I've achieved. I've, I've surprised myself, honestly. <laughs> well, and you go back 20 years, you're in a select group now. So you, you're in a, a fraternity or sorority, mm -hmm. how we may say it, uh, of folks that have been in that program that you can always network with mm -hmm. and connect with. And, you know, as you move through your career, let's talk a little bit about your plans there because this summer you had the opportunity to work in New York with, with CBS News. Tell us about that. Right. So I was a business management major, but really had no idea how I wanted to apply that to a career because, you know, management, you could really do anything. Uh, and, and so I, it was actually a previous Wall Fellow and a student athlete from Coastal, Brooke Wisebro, who came back and talked to the Wall Fellows program about her experience, you know, in broadcast, working for ESPN, and it just inspired me tremendously. And after that, I kind of decided that that was a career path I also wanted to follow. Uh, and I really just, again, tried to take advantage of all the opportunities I could. I went and talked to a bunch of different professors, just tried to get help 
working on my resume and seeing if they had any suggestions for places I should apply to. And one thing led to another, and I, I found out that someone is connected to CBS News who sits on our communications board. So I found that opportunity and got an interview with them. Um, it turned out really, really well, and they placed me with their senior business and economics correspondent at CBS. So not only did I get to work in broadcast, but I got to use my business knowledge as well. So it couldn't have worked out any better. Well, it's been, a, I know, a very quick four years for you. You've <laughs> still got some volleyball left uh, to wrap up, and then you'll start working on uh, the career. Uh, much success to you. I know we'll be watching as things go over the next couple of years. Certainly a tremendous representative of the university. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. That's Megan Laffin. You can watch her on the volleyball court. Check the schedule at GoCCUSports.com. They've still got a lot of important matches coming up. She'll be involved in the new Wall Fellows induction. That'll be coming up soon as well. One of Coastal's brightest stars, senior from Old New York and we'll have more Coastal Today in just a moment. Thanks Matt and thank you for joining us. Coastal Today would love to hear from you. Send an email with any comments or suggestions to Coastal Today at coastal.edu and you can view Coastal Today on our website at coastal.edu forward slash coastal today. Thanks for watching Coastal Today, an inside look at Coastal Carolina University.